It is Monday, All Hallows Eve, October 31st, 2011, and we're going to be live here for at least the next three hours, fresh out of prison for a crime he says he didn't commit, and I've looked at the case, it's clear he was framed, and uh, lawyers and others involved said it was a miscarriage of justice. Fresh out of prison. He's been out for a while, but this will be the first major interview he does. Fritz Springmeyer uh, is scheduled to be joining us today, uh, coming up in the third hour. Amazing researcher, a prolific uh, author. I'll be honest with you, I read some of his stuff 12 years ago or so and really couldn't believe it. And then over the years, so much of it turned out to be true. So uh, stuff that I read as, quite frankly, entertaining nightmare horror fiction uh, has turned out to be accurate in many respects. I haven't read all of his books, but I've read several of them. They're giant, thick things. Um, we uh, carry his uh, Bloodlines of the Illuminati book going into the big 13 families at Infowars.com. And uh, over the years, he's been in prison. That's been the, the only revenue that his uh, wife has basically uh, had. So Fritz will be joining us coming up in the third hour. Uh, in the meantime, we are going to have open phones today. And I noticed about a week ago that the system was unable to co-opt Occupy Wall Street. They put out the call, the Democratic operatives did, to call out well-meaning people. Then they tried to fully co-opt it to be Obama supporters and to call for tax increases on the middle class. That failed to a great extent, though there are the communists and others involved. It's a diverse mix, and the in the fetters and others have been down there educating them. So now, you notice over the weekend, you saw attacks all over the United States against Occupy Wall Street and people being taken to jail. And you saw the predictable demonization campaigns. And I heard local radio this morning demonizing the right of assembly and saying it was bad. And also I heard the Austin police chief you know, saying, well, somebody defecated in the flower bed at the city hall. Well, I've talked to multiple sources and I'm going to try to get them to go public. But anyone being let out of the homeless shelters or homeless being arrested uh, or people being let out of prison are being told by the local constabulary to go down to City Hall and that that's the only place they're allowed to sleep at night. And so another false flag. And I'd already been told this over the weekend by multiple sources. And then I'm listening to local radio this morning, local 590. Uh, with the host in there bashing Occupy Wall Street, just just the the idea of protesting. And I heard a very well-spoken vet call in who owns his own business. He said, A, we're not all unemployed like you say. B, we've confirmed they're telling homeless who are arrested for being out drunk at night, you won't be arrested. This is, this is at the Austin Travis County Jail. You, you're allowed to go sleep at Occupy. And so they're literally... Sending the homeless people who are drunk out of their minds with a dribbling diarrhea behind them there. And my crew's been down there. That's who's down there. It's homeless people. And this is happening in New York and other areas. So the media can say, look, they're dirty winos. And then paint the idea of protesting, period, as a wino with a bottle of Jack Daniels uh, who's, who's malnourished. Uh, uh, it, it's incredible how the system runs false flags. The dozens arrested at Occupy Demonstration in Austin. Actually, it's 40 plus now. We'll be right back. The night before All Saints Day, known as Halloween or the Devil's Holiday. Well, of course, it wasn't even a popular holiday until manufactured in the 1950s, picking up on the Druidic celebration of Samhain or Samhain. Human Sacrifice Day, that's mainline history books. Human Sacrifice all over Europe, throwing bound children, sometimes even war leaders or chiefs, into burning pits of flame and coals. And then the establishment wanting a new holiday to push, 
basically uh, picked it and manufactured and was not popularly celebrated until the mid-1950s. And they had songs like the Monster Mash. It was a graveyard smash. A monster mash. So we are live, ladies and gentlemen, and I want to thank you all uh, for joining us here today for this worldwide transmission. We do have Fritz Springmeyer, who was convicted of reportedly robbing a bank. He was a prolific writer selling tens of thousands of uh, books a month from what I know, and then reportedly went out and robbed a bank. And, of course, the evidence was he was completely and totally set up. Uh, he'll be joining us today here on air. And I will tell you, he's lost a lot of weight. Uh, I've now seen a short video of him. This will be his first major interview. And he looks like uh, basically a concentration camp victim compared to the way he looked previously. He looks like he's lost about half his body weight and uh, is frail, so we should be praying for him. And uh, he says he's coming on, though you know they could uh, try to gin something up for him speaking out and throw him back in the Huskow, but uh, he is certainly not one to give up. So we'll be talking to Fritz Sprenmeyer about the state of the world and more coming up uh, in this important interview uh, for much of the third hour today. Now, that said, we are seeing huge developments in the global economy right now. Uh, we also have some very important Franken food news dealing with the genetic takeover uh, of our planet. You have the whole Herman Cain scandal that is a complete distraction uh, and diversion from the issues. Uh, we have DHS-funded Taser drones launched in Texas. They have uh, basically the Taser shotgun rounds in them and can taser you from a distance directly out of they live where the little drone flies over and Rowdy Piper says, Hello there, my little friend. Come to tell them where I am. And then he shoots it with a shotgun. Uh, I think we're going to do a bit on that tonight on the nightly news, 7 o'clock Central. So that's coming up. Also, Communist uh, Occupy Pontiac, Michigan. Uh, we've got a first ever look inside the new Red Dawn that was going to come out this year. But it didn't come out this year because the Communist Chinese got upset. That's I didn't even know that. I was I was trying to find out about the film this morning and. Uh, instead uh, discovered that it, 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 who knows, it might not even come out next year because the communist Chinese got mad. So they had to go in with digital computers and reportedly spend a whole bunch of money to take the communist Chinese symbols off things and put North Korean symbols on it. But because North Korea is a client state of the chi -coms, that's now upsetting them. And because China holds so many of our T-bills, we now can't, I guess, criticize them. But the reason I was looking up Red Dawn this morning the new Red Dawn, is because I saw a uh, comment on one of my videos, a video response to a video that had just been posted yesterday and only had maybe 50 views, titled Communist Occupy Potomac, or Pontiac. And that is now up at Infowars.com, and it's a first look inside the film. You know why it's a first look? They haven't released trailers, nothing, nothing that I could find. This is just somebody walking around in Pontiac where a whole area of the town where everything's shut down has been turned into occupied America. And it actually looks like something the TSA would set up. So we have all the video, of the signs, you know, looking for certain citizens that need to be picked up to see something, say something. A lot of the posters look like some of the things the communists have had at Occupy Wall Street where... Uh, you know, they're saying transfer the wealth and uh, free market is evil. So some pretty powerful video uh, up at Infowars.com of that uh, titled Communist Occupy Pontiac. The video below shows a set for the new version of the movie Red Dawn. It was recorded on a street in Pontiac, Michigan, 
It's interesting to note that the posters show in the video, one is reminiscent of the Occupy Wall Street crowd, while another looks like something the Department of Homeland Security might put out. It says, deceitful leaders, greedy corporations, this is not democracy. We are here to help. In fact, that's the movie poster. It says, we are here to help with a red star. That's not just like, just like Homeland Security. Uh, and then it also says, you know, don't believe the Internet propaganda lies. We are here to help. Sounds like Cass Sunstein at the White House. And then they have images uh, of the uh, citizens by the hundreds up on placards saying dangerous citizen alert. And it's got images of all the people that need to be picked up and arrested. And, of course, it will really kill the plausibility of the film uh, to have the invasion be by North Koreans who couldn't fight their way out of a wet paper bag instead of the communist Chinese who've really infiltrated this country to such a great extent and have more than 5,000 front companies and have been caught shipping weapons in and would find a lot of Americans of uh, the, the socialist bent that would actually aid them. Like the Chinese somehow invading this country through covert operations and cutting off certain areas of the nation is more plausible than the 1980s Red Dawn with the Russians. They've got more manpower, more systems, and I'm not saying that's going to happen either. They don't need to. It's the global bankers that have conquered China and the United States, and they're playing us off uh, against each other. Uh, but uh, just amazing. And again, we'll be covering that tonight on the Nightly News, uh, 7 o'clock Central. Um, continuing with surveillance, uh, it's getting picked up in the British news over in the UK, the Daily Mail. Who's listening to your calls? Uh, and it goes on to say the Met's blanket surveillance system will track thousands of innocent civilians' mobiles. And it goes on to admit that the um, London police, uh, and it goes along and says the U.S. government as well is involved in the same thing as if that makes it okay, is just listening to people's phones and tracking them without warrants. Yes, this has been going on for more than a decade. And it's directly out of a nightmare system. It's the opposite of a free society. And, and here's the central point before I get into all this news that I want to make to whoever you are, no matter what area of the political spectrum you say that you sit on, or perhaps you're off the reservation like I am. This is the message. You cannot doubt any angle you look at it from that the powers that be are moving this country and every other nation they control in a hardcore retrograde move towards oppression, surveillance, every form of known oppression and tyranny. There is no doubting anybody that's honest, and there's also no doubting that when you have... A Republican in office now, the very same globalist aims are forwarded. And when you get a Democrat in office, the very same globalist programs are moved forward. There's different rhetoric, but the exact same programs are continued in lockstep, whether it's banker takeover bailouts or whether it's gun control moves or immigration policy or military policy. Or secret arrest or torture policy. It is the exact same direction. And that's why you see the leader of the Republican PAC, Mitt Romney. And I talk to Republicans all the time, mainline Republicans. I was talking to a former um, naval aviator, you know, F-14 pilot who's a stockbroker. At uh, a party I was at this weekend, uh, it was at my parents' party, he was a re really nice fella. And he even listens to the show some, but I brought up Mitt Romney to him. He said, yeah, I like Ron Paul on some things, but, you know, not on others. But he said, I said, well, what about Mitt Romney? I mean, he's the leader, and he's for open borders, illegal alien amnesty, restrictions on the Second Amendment. He wrote the socialist health care plan. Uh, he's for carbon taxes. He's for abortion. And I said, why are Republicans supporting him? And he goes, well, because they know he can probably win. And, you know, they, they know they need to be basically moderate. And uh, he went on to say that, well, Mitt Romney's a politician. He was doing that to win in Massachusetts. See, 
See, there's this attitude that politicians that know how to change their color like a chameleon, that, that oh, well, that's why Mitt Romney supports gun control. That's why Mitt Romney wrote the health care bill. That's why he did this. He's really a good guy. He'll show those Democrats once he gets in power.